Hi everyone, we're here at the Royal Society once again, joined by special guest, mathematician James Grime. You can see what he's wearing, the white gloves of destiny. That can mean only one thing. He's going to take a lucky dip into the old Royal Society card catalogue, and then we're going to go downstairs and look at what he pulls out. So James, you have to I shut just... your eyes. Okay, I'm ready. Ready. Now? Now? Okay. <laughs> okay. Where are you going to go? Right, I've picked this drawer. Oh, look at that. All right. G for Grime. Mm, going that one. Happy with that one? What have I picked? We hear you've got George Gilpin, 1802. He's writing to Sir Joseph Banks, the longest serving president of the Royal Society. Series. All right, Keith, you're in. Observations of Series Fernandia. Some kind of plant, one would presume. Ah, it's not very mathematical. It's... Oh, but it can be. Now, on the off chance that that isn't a spectacular letter, we're going to get our provisional second drawer that we'll look at just in case. So, James, again with the shut eyes. OK. Do your thing. All right. Uh, we'll go for this one. OK. Let's go to the front. That one. Here we go. Charles Turner bequest to the society of his collection of Newtonia. Well, I think we've had a look at the Newtoniana we in have. a previous objectivity. And this looks like Charles Turner, who presented those volumes, giving a bequest to the Royal Society. These are the letters associated with the presentation. I don't know what that's going to be like, but the Newtonia itself is... We can talk about Newton. Spectacular. Kind of a big deal. All right, let's go down below and see what you got. And paper number 11. So that's going to be in this volume. Let's take a look and see what we okay. have. I have to admit, I haven't got high hopes for this one. The Holy Grail is always pictures. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's spotany. It's paper 10, Observations of the New Planet by William Herschel. No, we can't go there, really. We're the next letter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's always one away. So, Apartment of the Royal Society, 1802. The sky being clear, I obtained an observation of Piazzi's new planets. In fact, this is the asteroid series. It wasn't a planet, it was a planet. <laughs> so, we've hit on because actually this follows on from Herschel's paper. Oh, okay. So here's Gilpin. And he's writing to Sir Joseph Banks, and he seems to be writing from the Royal Society's apartments, which would have been Somerset House, to Joseph Banks at his private residence, which is in Soho Square. OK. I obtained an observation of Piazzi's new planet, named by him Ceres Fernandia. So this is one of those weird astronomical names that we no longer use. On the 12th, the sky proved sufficiently clear to allow me to observe it on the meridian again. These two observations of the planet were those that had been made on stars near it for the purpose of comparison, admits of no doubt of its having altered its situation with respect to those stars. Ah, so Piazzi's obviously the astronomer who first saw it, mm -hmm. and now Gilpin has had a look and has confirmed that it's moving among the stars. So exactly, so, it must so it's, be a, it's a wanderer, it's a planet. A wandering star. There's actual coordinates, so it's, this is how it's moving over time. That's kind of nice. That's a good one, and I think that Herschel letter just before it will be on the same topic. So this is observations of a new planet, so this is Herschel's observations of the same thing. It is Piazzi. Mr. Piazzi of Palermo, so this is a big sensation. I'm delighted with this. From the standards of the White Gloves of Destiny, this is, this is probably Mount Everest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're getting a bit carried away here with this Gilpin letter. <laughs> All right, should we have a look at the second one you pulled? Yeah. Now then, surely in this huge fat volume we can find something Definitely. Good. Okay, so here's the first of those letters. Oh, look, it's got uh, a black 82. border. It has. What does yep. that mean? Objectivity viewers know what that <laughs> means. <laughs> that means the writer is in a period of mourning. For how long would you do this? Depend 38 days. No, I've just made that up. <laughs> I just made that up. I thought that was a very specific <laughs> amount of days. It's like mathematically significant. Right? I wish yeah. I'd thought of a more mathematically interesting number, but yeah. So, as you can see, this one is from Frederick Manning, and the letter starts, Gentlemen, by the kind indulgence of my co-executors, I am permitted to announce to you a most interesting bequest to the Royal Society from my uncle, the Reverend Charles Turner, FRS, who was suddenly taken from us. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> because this is who's died, mm -hmm. Turner. Yep. Turner, who's donating this amazing thing to the Royal Society we're about to talk about. And I always ask you in these videos, Keith, how did the Royal Society come to end up with this or that or mm. this or that? Here's like a smoking gun of how the Royal Society ended up with one of its crown jewels. That's right. So this is a donation letter. James, I, I am... 
The gloves belong yeah. to you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. This is amazing. So, Keith, read on. What's been okay. given? A collection of drawings, memoirs, a few medals and other articles enumerated in a list illustrative of Sir Isaac Newton. So Turner was like this Isaac Newton super fan who had collected all this amazing Newton stuff. He's died and now this is what? A nephew or someone saying, you're getting Royal Society, you're mm. getting all the good stuff. That's right. So Charles Turner owned the well-known property at Woolsthorpe. So this is Newton's birthplace where he lived in Lincolnshire. And now the family are in the will of Charles Turner are giving a collection of Newtoniana to the Royal Society. I, I didn't realise that you had this kind of stuff about mm. Newton. But Turner's taken this to the next level because he owns his house. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> he didn't leave that to the Royal Society. No, well, we owned it for a very short period between handing it on to the National Trust. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, here we go. I should certainly wish the dial presented by Charles Turner to either form part of the collection or be placed near it. That's the sundial which we've covered in Objectivity. Exactly. Course. This is another another famous Newton object, the sundial that was attached to the house exactly. that the society now has. Keith? This is mathematical magic. I'll say two <laughs> things. One, great pull. Yeah. Great pull. Two, let's get out this amazing bequest that Turner has left to the Royal Society. I've always wanted to get it out again. Yeah, we haven't seen everything because there's loads of stuff in there. So th this is it, Keith. This is what he left. That's right. Look at that. Wow. I mean, it's difficult to take that on the train. <laughs> well, you know, it's a, it's a good workout. <laughs> Okay, so now we've brought upstairs a couple of volumes of the Newtonia. Keith, you're going to show James what we've got? Yeah, so this is a very decorative set of volumes in which Charles Turner pastes in everything he's collected about Newton. Right. In these rather beautifully illustrated pages. Once you get into the meat of this, you'll find that he's collected engravings of Newton and manuscripts, commissioned paintings. Newton in his prism, of course, very good. In black and white, so you yeah. can't actually see the colours. I've not seen a lot of these pictures. Some of them are very kind of Roman in right. the outlook. Newton, towards the end of his life, was quite, a, quite short and chubby, but of course they wanted him to look heroic. Newton dies in the early 18th century. Charles Turner is putting this together in the early 19th century, so they're way far apart. But the connection is the Thought Manor, of course. So it's just really, I think, quite nice that someone would take the trouble not only to take images of the buildings that Newton lived in, but employ somebody to do floor plans and things like that. So there's a historical record of the state of the property in the time that Turner was working. Just for the record, James didn't pull this out with the white gloves. <laughs> this is the bequest. I don't want you getting carried away. Don't you want me to look at the nice Newton stuff? We know from accounts of Newton's childhood, and, and William Stukeley's manuscript is, is a good source for this, that Newton made lots of objects during his childhood. So he made solar dials like this one, he made water clocks, he made models. And this stone would have been in the wall at Walsall Manor when Charles Turner owned the place and uh, removed uh, in, a, in a, an act of 19th century vandalism and uh, sent to the Royal Society as a, as a memento of Isaac Newton. 